Hello and welcome again. We will now proceed with our top hat and optimize its shape. Then we will develop an easy way to texturize it. We will create a simple black surface and add a colorized band to it. But let us begin by examining what we already have by now. We see that the top edge of the hat is not well defined, so we want to sharpen it a bit. The same is true for the edge between the brain and the body. We can do this by using the crease function. To understand how crease works, let us look at this simple plane for a moment. I will select the left half of it and rotate it along the x-axis. As you can see, the plane gets bended in a smooth way and the surface moves away from the control points. So we can immediately see that the control points are not always located right on the surface of the object. Right now their influence on the surface is weak to keep the surface very smooth and organic. With the crease function we can change the amount of this influence and thus we can create sharper edges. It is important to know that crease only works on edges and never on single vertices. So you need to select at least one edge before you can apply crease. Let us select one single edge and then enable crease. The crease tool can be found under Mesh, Edges, Edge Crease. As a shortcut you also can enable it by pressing Shift, E. A dashed line appears. You can enlarge or shorten this line by moving the mouse. The longer the line is, the stronger the edges pull on the surface until it touches the edges. Note that edges with high crease values are rendered in pink with increasing intensity. You can select any set of edges and adjust the crease value for each selection differently. You can, of course, select many edges at once and set their crease value in one single operation. And you always can modify the crease values at any time later. Let us now turn back to our hat. We want to crease along the top edge and along the lower edge between the brain and the body of the hat. Go to edit mode. Then select the top edge loop as follows. Press the ALT key, then right click on an arbitrary edge of the loop. After the edge loop is selected, press SHIFT, E, and then enlarge the appearing handle, until the edge looks clean cut. After we have adjusted the top of the hat, we can proceed with the brain. Again select the appropriate edge loop. Then invoke the crease function, and sharpen the edge exactly as shown before. At the end, let us compress the hat along one axis to give it a more vivid touch. Press S, X to limit the scaling to one axis only. The basic model of our hat is completed by now, so we are ready to get a little deeper into texturizing. Well, this is a very complex topic. But we will choose a simple approach here and proceed in small steps only. With Blender you will first need to learn how to work with materials, which in first place means you must know how to create materials and how to assign them to your objects. So please always remember that working with materials is the key to create textures for your models in Blender. And here we go. Ensure that you have selected your object. And within the Properties window, locate the Materials tag. You will initially see an empty material collection and a material pop-up box. The collection will contain all materials which you are going to use on your object. And the material pop-up box allows you to create new materials or to reuse existing materials for multiple objects. Right now we have no materials defined, hence we only can create a new material at this time. When your object has no material assigned, then selecting a material from the material box or creating a new material will automatically assign the just created material to your object. Also, as soon as a material is created, a whole set of new attributes get visible. We will get there in a moment. 
but you also can first create your material slots within the material collection. We will first add two empty slots for our object, by pressing the plus sign twice. Then we will create two new materials, one for the hat band, and another one for the hat body. Please rename your materials immediately. This will help you to keep your project well organized. Also note that any change in the material settings is always associated to the currently selected material slot. Hence we have to first select the second slot before we can assign a material to it. And remember that the selected slot will receive all subsequent material changes. Also it is important to know that the topmost material in the collection will by default be assigned to the entire object. Let us change the color of the hat body for demonstration. Select the hat body in the material collection, then change the diffuse color setting as you like. And as a result you see that the entire top hat gets very colorized. Apparently the second material for the hat band is not used at all. We will change this now. Go to edit mode. Select the faces which shall be used for the band. You may want to rearrange the location of the band a bit. Now go to the material settings and switch to the hat band material. And now click on the assign button. You see that the hat band is instantly recolorized to white. This is the current color specified for the second material. Let us change the material color to a light red. The model has now been assigned to two different materials. One material for the hat itself, using a dark gray color. The other material used for the band, using a light red color. In edit mode we have selected a subset of faces for the band, and assigned the hat band material to these faces. Now we are almost ready to bake our first texture for our model. In fact we are ready to go. But let us take a moment to see what is actually going on. In the properties window, go to the object properties. Here you find an entry named Skelty in the UV texture collection. This entry has been silently added when you created the initial sculpt cylinder, and it contains the information about which color pixel in the sculpt map corresponds to which vertex in the Skelty. Let us take a closer look. First, split the screen and open the UV image editor. And in the 3D view enter edit mode, and select all vertices. Now you see the sculpt map in the typical grip structure which is common for all sculpted prints. In fact this grip structure is what is really stored in the sculpt UV texture. And we also now have defined an association between the UV texture which is always named Skelty, and the Skelt map which is always a two-dimensional image, which currently is named Cylinder, and which we will rename now to Top Hat Skelt map. Please note that, although Blender allows to change the UV texture, any attempt to actually modify it, will most probably result in broken sculpted prints. And the also often completely overlooked but most important property of sculpted prints is, that the UV texture is also used for the unwrapping of two-dimensional textures on the surface of the Skelty. Now this UV texture is not only used for the creation of the Skelt map. The exactly same UV texture is also used for creating the Sculpty's surface texture. But we cannot associate two output images to the same UV texture. So we either can bake the sculpt map, or we can bake the surface texture. Well, there is a simple trip to get this sorted out. We can create an additional UV texture. And whenever we do that, the new UV texture will become a copy of the currently selected UV texture. So we have created two UV textures now with the exact same data. But now we can associate different images to them. So let us create a new image and assign it to the UV text entry. Ensure that the UV text layer is selected, and you are in edit mode. Then select all vertices. 
Please take care here. If you don't select all vertices now, you will not be able to proceed with the next step. Go to the UV editor, and there create a new image of size 64 times 64. Just click on Image, New. Then enter width and height. Please use 64 times 64 pixels for now, even if you think that this is a very low resolution texture. We will come back to this issue in the next tutorial of this series. Rename the new image to Hat Texture, so that it becomes easier to locate it later in the list of images. Now whenever we rebate the Sculpt Map, it will end up in the Sculpt the image as expected. While whenever we bake the UV text, the result will be placed in the surface texture, as we will see now. And now, finally we can bake the texture as follows. In the Properties window, go to the Render Settings. Close to the bottom of the Render section, you find the Bake tag. Select Textures from the Bake Mode selector. Then click on the Bake button. You will end up with a mostly black image containing a red horizontal stripe. This is your very first and very simple texture for your Sculpty. The good thing about this approach is, that you never mess up your Sculpt Map with your texture. You can switch between your Sculpt Map and your texture by selecting the appropriate UV texture. Now you can save the HAP texture to your hard disk and examine how it appears on your object in Second Life. After you have uploaded the surface texture, just drag it onto your Sculpty. It should correctly wrap around the object. If you think that something is wrong, then please check in the texture tab that you have enabled default mapping. Also look at the repeats per face. Ensure that their values are set to 1 in U and in V. And check that the offsets have been set to 0. You should also set the color of your Sculpty to white. Otherwise you will get a mixture between the SL color settings and your texture. Please also check that full bright is disabled for now. Now take a closer look at the Sculpty. You can see that indeed the red band is now visible, but it does not appear where we placed it in Blender. Also the sharpened edges at the top and at the brim are not visible. Why that? Please remember, that we have changed the model when we applied the crease function, and we also move the vertices for the band along the z-axis. Hence we have modified the hat, but we did not recreate the scalp map, and consequently now the baked surface texture does no longer match the baked scalpty. We just have forgotten to rebake the sculpt map with the current model. We will fix that now. Note that the Sculpty Baker is only enabled in the UV Image Editor, when also the Sculpty UV Texture is selected. So you need to switch to the Sculpty UV Texture before baking. But there is an alternative. You also can call the Sculpty Baker from the top menu at any time. Navigate to Render, Bake Sculpt Maps, keep all attributes to their defaults and click OK. And now finally, the band appears at the correct location. We are now at the end of the second Sculpty tutorial. I have shown you, how you can use the crease function to make sharp edges. After we have finished the basic model, I have given you a very lightweighted introduction into Blender's material system, and how you can use it to create textures based on multiple materials. In the next tutorial, we will continue by introducing some more fancy texturing techniques, including shadow maps, and procedural textures. Until then, stay tuned and have fun. See you later!